Hey guys, this is Scott from Forgot to Grow Up Podcast, and welcome to week two of our countdown to Adventures of Hindi War. This week we're going to be covering The Incredible Hulk from 2008, starring Ed Norton, Tim Roth, William Hurt, and Liv Tyler. I think it's Liv Tyler. Taylor. One of those things. Anyways, the 2008 The Incredible Hulk movie, the second in the MCU movies, but also my least favorite. To be completely honest, I just finished rewatching it again, and this has always been my least favorite of the MC mo- movies. One of my least favorite overall superhero movies, to be honest, because it's just a little too much love story going on, um, not enough of the Hulk, to be honest. And when he is the Hulk, I don't particularly love what they do with the character. It's nothing groundbreaking, um, but it's still an okay. It's okay. It's still an MCU movie, so. We gotta cover it this week. So I'm just gonna dive right in and give you guys a quick breakdown of what happened in this movie, and then at the end I'll give you my three uh, trivia facts, because I like giving trivia facts. So let's just dive right in, guys. So we start off the short little uh, opening credit scene where we get a little quick brief history uh, in flashes of how Bruce Banner became, becomes the Green Rage Machine, the Hulk. Through a lab experiment and high levels of gamma radiation, gamma radiation, one of these times I'll say it right, gamma radiation, high levels of gamma radiation affect him, change him into the Hulk. So whenever he gets angry, his heart rate rises, he uncontrollably turns into Hulk, for at least this movie part of it. Anyways, and the Hulk's this big indestructible thing. If you don't know who if you really don't know who the Hulk is, I don't, I don't know what you're doing here. Anyway, so this Hulk technology, that's won by the military. And that's where William Hurt's character, General Ross, comes in. So General Ross wants the Hulk technology to make more super soldiers and Hulk-type soldiers, I guess. That's a little vague. He just wants the technology. He's trying to capture the Hulk slash Bruce Banner. So Bruce Banner's on the run at the beginning of the movie because he just wants to be left alone. He doesn't want to hurt anybody. He doesn't want to be the Hulk. He's trying to learn how to control it. But he's also kind of in love with Jenna Ross's daughter. That'd be Betty, played Betty Ross, I'm sorry, uh, played by Liv Tyler, Taylor, whatever it is. Um, and so he's in a little bit of a conflict, because he, he loves her, which is the part of the movie I don't love, to be honest. But anyways, that little bit of a love triangle, no, well, it's not a love triangle, that little love complication, plus the fact that her father's in the mix, I guess it's a triangle. Anyways. General Ross wants the technology, so he's got his top man, Tim Roth's character, Lena Team, trying to capture Bruce Banner. And so, in the doing so, he gets his butt kicked by the Hulk, so he thinks he needs a little extra kick, so they take some of the super so- soldier serum. That's right, a little throwback, or throw forward actually, because we haven't hit Captain America yet. A little bit of a throw forward to Captain America. Um, but he doesn't quite use it right, doesn't quite do the effect he wants, and he ends up pumping way too much of it and it becomes the abomination which is really just an evil version of the Hulk kind of you can see in a pattern here all the all the first MCU movies have this kind of tweak of just oh the villain's just gonna be evil version of the of the hero real original but these are villains from the comics so we've got abomination so abomination obviously goes crazy like Again, like all the Marvel villains tend to do, he goes crazy, and so the Hulk has to team up with General Ross to stop him. And while he's the Hulk, the movie's named after him, so obviously he gets in there, does his Hulk smash, and bingo, bango, I don't know too much of it, but he wins. Um, if you didn't know that, it's, it's yeah, 10 years late. Yeah, that's right, it's 2018. It's been 10 years-ish. It came out later in the year. In 2008, I should say. But anyways, it's been 10 years, is my point. Um, but yeah, so Hulk wins. He ends up, like, not killing, but disabling the Abomination. Or does he kill him? I watched this yesterday, I should know. Anyways, doesn't really matter. Um, but it, the last scene ends with General Ross sitting in a bar, just having a drink, because the Hulk got away and the Abomination was a whole wreck. He's probably in trouble. And Tony Stark comes in. Yeah, that's right. We got Tony Stark. We'll throw back to last week. And Iron Man, which had come out the same year as the Hulk, as the Incredible Hulk. 
both 2008 different parts of the year. That's right, they were doing two MCU movies right from the beginning. Um, and so then this last scene, they're both in the this bar and they're talking about the Hulk joining the Avengers. That's right, and that's where it ends. And that wasn't a post credit scene. That was the last scene. And there, this is actually the only MCU movie that doesn't have a post credit or mid credit scene. A lot of people mistakenly think that that was a post credit scene, but it was actually the the ending scene. It was the last scene of the movie before credits. That's why it's not a post credit scene. A little little knowledge for you guys there. But anyways, that was the first of my trivia facts. See. That was kind of a weird segue, but anyways, yes, so there's no, this is the only MCU movie that has no post credit scene. So if you go look that up, you'll find that as a fact. So this is fact number two I have, which was the first fact I actually had, is that Universal still holds partial rights to The Incredible Hulk or any Incredible Hulk solo films. And so this is because they were the ones who originally distributed the TV show back in the 70s. And so they still own rights to distribute any Hulk solo products, which is why Hulk can appear in Avengers and Thor without them having to give anything to Universal, but they can't make another Thor, oh, not Thor, another Hulk solo movie. So I hope you found that one interesting. The last trivia fact I have for you, this is the only MCU film that's right, I've got a lot of onlys. This is a very unique film in that sense, but this is the only Phase 1 MCU movie that doesn't have a Nick Fury cameo. That's right, it has a Tony Stark cameo, but not Samuel Jackson, Nick Fury. Why? I don't know. Probably something to do with Universal, or maybe he just he was off that day. Maybe he was on vacation. Who knows? So that was the third trivia fact for you. And that's The Incredible Hulk from 2008. Sorry, guys. Uh, in week two of our countdown to Avengers Infinity War. I hope you guys found this video interesting. I hope you guys join me next week uh, for our week three, where we're covering Iron Man 2, I believe. I hope that's right. Otherwise, it'd be an awkward ending to a video. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. Bye.